Hey guys, it's your boy Chris, CaribbeanPod.com, your wicked chef. Today we're doing something with smoked herrings. You may call it smoked herring choker, some of you may call it a smoked herring uh, salad, oh come on now. And some of you may call it a smoked herring bull jaw. And I've got my fillet of smoked herring sitting in that hot water there. I mean, this is just the way I do it. You can certainly boil it as well. Other ingredients, just wait patiently, you know. Chris here at CaribbeanPod.com guys, let's do this smoked herring recipe. But before we get to the recipe, let me show you the book that we're giving away this morning. So there it is guys, today's giveaway, the Cupcakes Cookbook A. Hey, I know I was waiting for this one. All kind of lovely recipes, look at them. Frosting, icing, all kind of... Why is this dog barking and interrupting my thing guys? I do apologize for that, I'm in my house so you gotta expect that. Beautiful cupcakes here at the end of the video. Yeah, I'm forcing all to watch the video. I'll show you guys how to win this cupcakes book. Remember, the draw happens uh, the first week of November, so stay tuned and enter your name to win. Let's see if we can quickly run through the ingredients we'll be using here today. Up front, Mr. Onion. Small onion, but I'll only be using about half of this. Um, if you want, you can certainly use a red onion or a sweet onion. It's totally up to you. Some fresh ground black pepper, maybe about a quarter teaspoon of that, nice fresh stuff. Some olive oil, two tablespoons of olive oil. Um, a ripe tomato, medium size, nice and firm. You know your boy can't go on without the Caribbean sunshine. Scotch bonnet pepper, you can use habanero, any sort of spicy pepper you like. If you want, you can leave it out altogether. You want to use a sweet bell pepper, you go ahead. But I want that kick from this, so I'm going to use maybe about a quarter of this scotch bonnet pepper. Something not traditional to this recipe, and that's parsley. I'm going to give him about a tablespoon of chopped parsley, just to brighten everything up. Additionally, and what I should have here, I'm going to go digging in the fridge to see if I can find some, is a couple scallions that would work well in here as well. And if you have pimento pepper, the seasoning peppers out of the Caribbean, feel free to use that here. Now, you'll notice that I am using some, uh, some parsley, as I said. If you guys want to kick things up and use a little bit of any type of herbs that you may like, so let's say some fresh thyme or shadow benny or, or anything along those lines, Feel free to add a teaspoon chopped up as well. And the star of the show, and this is my favorite product here, the Chelsea brand out of Toronto, I believe it is, yeah, out of Toronto. And this is smoked herring fillet, fillets, well, fillets, or whatever. Oh, yeah, there we go, fillets. No bones, uh, no sort of outer skin or anything to, to remove. I remember when my dad would traditionally do this, it would be the actual whole fish you would have to roast it, remove the skin, and then boil it. What we're going to do now is prep this. And since it's already um, filleted, all we're going to have to do is just pour hot, boiling hot water over that, let it sit, and then we'll shred it. One thing, guys, this recipe here, when you're working with smoked herrings, your hands will immediately grab the smell from this and it is strong. It is a strong scent that will last fairly long on your hands. So if you want, Wear gloves and you're good to go. What I forgot to mention, this here, the package, it's about 300 grams, which is just about three quarter pound or so of um, uh, the smoked herrings, your fillets, bones removed and everything else. Um, what you can do, and I mean to say during the summer months on the out outdoors, what I would normally do on the um, burner on my grill, I would boil this in hot water, dump that water out and then shred it. Indoors, because the scent is very strong, it will remain in the house. Guys, once the kids come through the door, they'll be complaining, Ew, what's that smell? When your husband comes through the door, he'll be like, Oh gosh, it's smelling good. You see the difference? All right. What I'm going to do, I'm boiling some water. I'm going to pour that boiling hot water in here and let that sit for about 20 minutes or so until it's cool and I can handle it. So in goes that boiling hot water out of the kettle. Make sure you cover it. Now all you're doing now, and make sure you have the windows open in your house. Like I said, the, the scent is strong. It is oily as well too. That is typical. Don't worry about that. Let it sit now until the water gets cool. It will start to curl. Don't worry about that. Let that sit and let that soften up so we can shred it for making this. So as we wait for the 
the smoked herrings to um, in, in the hot water there. Let's put let's get the other ingredients ready. And I'm just going to use a piece of this scotch bonnet pepper as I said. Remember if you're concerned about the heat, we've talked about this in the past. The seeds here and the area directly surrounding the seed is where most of that heat is going to be. If you're scared of that raw fire, I mean it's like that's, the, <laughs> that's the whole idea of Caribbean sunshine, right? Fire! If you're scared of that fire, don't use that area. So I'm just going to use a nice little small chunk. Remember when you're handling peppers again, wear gloves and wash your hands immediately after with uh, soap and water and all I'm gonna do is give this a nice fine chop we just want to get tiny little pieces little hints of this little Caribbean sunshine in every bite of this so just gonna go ahead and mince that up finely just gonna use half of this onion and the trick here is to slice this very very thinly Because the last thing you want is that, I mean to say, the smoke herring already have the power to make your bread vamp. The last thing you need is some big piece of onion adding to that nasty bread, you know. So nice and thin as you can see, almost paper thin. All we're going to do is chop up the parsley as well. So a nice fine chop. On the scallion, the green onions, spring onions, whatever you guys call it. So we've got a nice fine chop going here. I'm just going to move that over. Same idea with the with the parsley. Nice and fine. Now with the tomato, it's important that you remove the seeds because I don't want this to be. Um, soggy. So all I'm going to do is pretty much press down on there, remove those seeds, and chop. with the tomato, all you're doing is sort of cubing it, just to get little pieces. It's going to be nice and bright. It's going to be a nice, colorful dish, guys. So I've got nice little cubes here, quarter-inch cubes, I guess. I'm just going to give it another cut this way. and we're pretty much prepped and ready to go so all we got to do now is shred the smoked herrings and then assemble everything the smoked herrings are nice and cool now so I can handle them I drained out that initial water and what I'm gonna do now is give it a rinse with some more warm water and then drain it as dry as I could. I'm going to have to squeeze it to get most of any of that liquid out as best as so I what can. What I did was I rinsed it out with that extra water again and I squeezed it dry. You can see like I really squeezed it dry and then now what we're going to do is shred it with our hands but rather than just shred it what I'm going to do is um, make it very very fine because I like it f more fine than just but I mean, if you guys like chunky pieces, you can certainly do it like that. But let's take a look at how I'm going to pound this to make it nice and I'm shredded. So basically, all I'm doing, I'm going to use my fingers and pull it apart first because I want to get rid of all those, like these big pieces, just shred it up into smaller pieces. And like I said, if you guys want and you want to have some body to this, you can certainly do it as it is right now here with chunky pieces. However, I much prefer to use Mr. Ponga, you know, like a pestle. And just go at it until you get a nice, fine... Well, once you start adding the other ingredients, you'll see how fine it is. So I'm going to go ahead, pound that up for a couple minutes, and then we'll get to assembling everything. So as you can see, it's all crushed up nicely. I used the wooden pounding thing I have here you can use I mean and again this is totally up to you guys you can use um, the pestle from a mortar and pestle to do this and it's nice and dry ready to be seasoned up now now it's just a matter of giving them that dose of fresh ground black pepper guys one thing I forgot to mention when you're dealing with smoked herrings and they come in a different uh, different variety of ways different ways uh, you may get it whole, you may the filly may even have little bones in there. I'm already seeing little bones in there and I'm not sure if you guys can see it in the camera. 
these little tiny bones. These are very soft and, and they cause no problems. But you want to go through it and make sure there are no hard bones that you can choke on. And that's one of the things that's just typical of smoke herrings. You've got to look out for it. The black pepper is already in there. In goes the scotch bonnet pepper, the scallions. Oh, this one edge up up too nice at all. In goes the lovely tomato. And you'll notice there's a little there's a little something I'm holding back on the onions. I'm gonna wait for last to add the onions. In goes that chopped parsley. And I know some of you guys are wondering, how come Chris always using his hands? You know what? I like to use my hands, so <laughs> I'm gonna be eating this, so don't worry. You guys can wear gloves and use spoon and, and all kind of thing like that. But your boy good to go. In goes that chopped onion now, and the reason why. I put the chopped onion on top and waited for last here. We're going to heat that olive oil now. I'm going to pour that olive oil all over here. But I want that olive oil to sort of cook the onion briefly as we add it into the thing here before we mix it up. So what I would do, it would take off some of that rawness from the onion. And additionally, it will take on some of the flavor from the onion when we start to mix this up. So I got my trusty little frying pan ready to go again. So all I'm going to do is pour in a couple tablespoons of olive oil into here and you can use vegetable oil any type of oil that you have or you like using and you can certainly use more oil if you want to I'm just gonna put this on a high flame and let that heat up and as soon as I start seeing little simmers of smoke coming up it means it's ready olive oil is one of those things that cannot work well with high heat so as soon as you start seeing little whispers of smoke it's time to go as we wait for that olive oil to heat up, one thing I gotta mention to you guys, traditionally, and I've seen this is the way my dad does it, at this point, exactly the way it is here, what he would do is um, in a frying pan or a pot, he would fry up the onion, like add the onion to a pot with, with the oil, let that cook down a little bit, and then add all the other ingredients, cook that for about two or three minutes, and that's the way he likes doing his. Me, I like doing my thing a little bit different. So the oil should be nice and warm now, well hot. So all we're gonna do is pour it. Nice little sizzle, huh? And immediately give that a stir. We want everything to get to know everybody up in here. A nice little family something. Ooh, it's smelling nice. Kitchen wicked today again. Oy, oy, oy. Give that a good stir. If you want to add a little bit more olive oil in there, you feel free to do so. And this is pretty much done, guys. As always, nice and wicked, eh? So let's take a look now at how we're going to get one person to win that cookbook, that cupcake book. Chrissy at CaribbeanPod.com. Guys, give this recipe a try. This here is good with... Um, with ground provision, with dal and rice, on sandwiches. I'm gonna show you guys how to do this with cornmeal dumplings. So the next video is gonna show you guys uh, how to make cornmeal dumplings to go with this lovely smoke herring, I mean to say choka, <laughs> buljal, salad, whatever you wanna call it. It's smoked herrings. Guys, let's take a look at that cookbook now. Yeah, so winning this cookbook, this cupcake cookbook, is pretty simple. All you have to do in the comment section below, tell me what is your favorite cupcake. I know immediately some of you thinking chocolate, and a few, well, the next majority is probably thinking red velvet. Mm -mm, none of them I like. Me, I'm not a cupcake person, but I want to send one lucky viewer this cupcake cookbook the first week of November. In the comment section below, Tell me what is your favorite cupcake. One winner will be chosen randomly and this book will be sent out to you. This year, guys, what I forgot to mention, besides all the different ways I told you you can enjoy this, crackers, you know, Crick's Biscuit. All you gotta do is get some crackers, put a little pile of this on top and you have a wicked order there. Hey, Christmas coming up. But I mean to say, like I said, guys, the smoke herons will leave a little sting in your mouth. Bad breath. So. Do your thing, Chrissy at CaribbeanPod.com. Nice to have you in the kitchen.